Hi guys, within this video we're going to use an oil pastel monoprint technique. It is a trace technique but there's a real value to it. We're going to take some reference material and we're going to try and work out how we can translate the marks into something that looks like art. To understand how this surface can be developed into some kind of pattern or texture within your work. So I've been on the internet and I've got some really lovely clear images of owls, high resolution pictures with isolated backgrounds so I can just see the profile of the bird nice and clearly and I can look at this texture. Now how do you draw this texture? Do you draw it exactly as it is or do you simplify it? If we look back to the worksheet with Mark Hurl's work on it, in here we can see these sort of cutaway circles, little triangles describing different sorts of patterns on the surface in the feathers. In this wide one, this one that's like little scales of the feathers overlap. Now I have the picture in front of me backwards, now I can't see through it, but if I hold it up to the window, I can see through it. And what I'm going to do is lightly draw around the profile. If you're in the art room, you might be able to use a light box. You'd be drawing around the oval shape of that just roughly, and then we're going to colour it in. So if I lift this up, hopefully you can just see that I've gone beyond the boundary of the owl. I'll give myself a little bit of space. And I'm now going to colour this whole area in with an oil pastel. Now, oil pastels come in lots of different colours and they don't often look like this. They're normally little broken sections um, in the pot. And this is absolutely ideal for what we're doing. It's not for fine work. It's just a filling that void, a solid fill. So I'm pressing reasonably hard and I'm going to just fill this whole area. Now, you could say, does it matter if it's a bit textural like that? Yes, it does, to be honest. You need a nice, dense fill for the nature of the transfer we're going to use in this process. I'll come back to you when it's done. Right, so I've just about done it. There's a few little specks of white on there and I can just fill those in. That will do the job, to be honest with you. Now, if you look at it, there are little burrs and broken off bits. You can see them on my fingertips. We can ideally do with these being tapped into a bin and removed before we move on to the next stage. So the next thing I've done, I've just trimmed down some of the excess paper with a pair of scissors so it's slightly smaller than A4. And I'm going to position the owl where I would like it onto the piece of A4 paper. Notice I'm arranging it quite central. There's the edge of the paper and I'm going to secure it in place with a piece of masking tape. Masking tape is the right tape for the job because it is removable without tearing the base paper. And I put a longer piece on or you'd put two smaller pieces on so it doesn't swing like a pendulum from side to side and your image is going to stay fairly static but you'll be able to lift it up. Now if we look at the owl there is not a very clear outline all around him. Now this guy has a really clear outline all around him. Bart Simpson's has a solid black line which contains the yellow of his head and so on. You know what I mean. Bye bye Bart, we don't need you here. So if I say it's not got an outline, it's not got a single outline like Bart has, it's got a kind of broken bit with dark textures and the furriness of feathers. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to, with our mark making, convey the surface, the softness of the edge of the owl. Imagine if you could touch it, but your fingers would just press into it because its body's going to be set back. So I'm going to start off working around the outline and I'm drawing what I call a broken line. That's a solid line. This is a broken line. Now, as I'm pressing on here with my sharp pencil, notice sharp, when I lift it up, the oil pastel on the back of here is transferring onto the surface. So I'm doing a trace drawing where any mark I put on the top is going through onto the base paper. So I'm drawing some fluffy sections and we're going back and look at my line. So in places it's solid but wiggly. Here it's quite light and fluffy. There will be little bits of the oil pastel put marks onto your paper. Don't worry about that, that's just part of this process. So I'm just going to work around the outline while I'm practicing. And here I could do it a bit darker because it's the edge here. It's like the, the eerie like feature. It's not technically an ear, but it looks like an ear. And I'm just drawing around, altering the weight. If you go slightly off the line, don't worry too much about it. Using this process, you don't really think, have to think too much about the shape and proportion because that has been done for you. You're tracing those things down. 
we're more interested in what we're going to do in a minute where we're going to start to consider the kind of marks and textures on the surface of the owl, which is what we're really doing this process for. I'm excited to draw these talons. Now, if I'm saying that this is fluffy and if I put my fingers into it, it's going to be soft. Imagine if I touch one of these beasts, it's going to be really sharp. It's going to be hard, isn't it? Think what they're for. So I often think about when I'm drawing something, the nature of it, its surface. What, what would it be like to touch it? How can I convey that in the drawing? So I'm going very hard when I'm going round the edge of these talons. Went slightly off the line there, but it doesn't matter, guys. It does not matter at all. You can modify it afterwards. I'm going to have a little look at that now. Oh, it's going well. So I've missed a bit out there, haven't I? I need to go back into here. I've gone a bit wrong on that line. I've missed out that section, I think, there, when the other talon goes. This is this leg. So I'm beginning to think about the anatomy of this bird. And this is the far away leg. I'm going to now go in for its face. Are you ready? So sharp pencil check. You've still got a sharp. If not, get the pencil sharpener on it. Draw its eyes in. I'm working very precisely on that line and be very careful in what I'm doing. So again, when we're thinking about the nature of these, these got a real clean edge. I don't really want a broken line on these. Nice, real solid line. Around them, I might have a broken line where the feathers are and the dark bits. If I think that I've got quite enough oil pastel in here, I can take my oil pastel, just go over it a little bit into the section I need. Okay, that's working well down the edge of the beak. So it looks a bit cartoony at the moment, but that's because we haven't got the textures and tones in. Now, I might start thinking there's a shine down the side of this beak and at this side it's dark. So I'm going to start drawing in and filling in some sections. Solid fill almost. On the eye, solid fill. In the section above the eye, solid fill. So just work one section up a little for you. You can see it coming together already. Into this bit, now I've done some of those solid fill bits. It's darker in those sections around it. Now, tricky thing. What am I going to do in this bit here? Let's zoom in. What is going on in that section? I can see some little marks, so I've interpreted them as dots. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's working okay. There's some different tones on there. I've popped in some little lines. It's a bit more shade at this side now. As I start to make adjustments, I think, yeah, I'll try something else. It looks a bit darker there. Try something else. That whole bit there looks a bit too bright in the image below. That whole section gone a bit darker. So you can see, I keep looking at what I'm doing behind. Now, these sections below here, they're like lines and they're coming down. As I'm drawing those lines, I'm not just drawing them as big spiky lines, I'm drawing them with a little bit of weight in turn. So you see how at the ends I'm lifting my pressure off, a bit like if you look at an eyelash, at the anchor end it's a little bit thicker than the soft end that's away from your body, where you can see it lighter on the tip. So this is now what we're talking about. We're looking at the textures and thinking about the kind of marks and textures we can see. See in here, it kind of, they're not long lines like they are down here. So I've gone for a dot dash technique. Do I need more? Yes. What's going on up here then? We'll look right up here. What's going on in there? So they're like little, little lines. Do I need to be exact about these things? I suspect if I had a different photo of an owl, or a slightly different owl, even of the same kind, it looks slightly different. So do you see into there, I've gone for these little horizontal arcs, suggesting again volume on the top of its head. Remember when we want to convey volume, we want something to look rounded, we put contour lines into it. We want it to look flat, we put flat lines into it. So remember those principles. Now down here, around this rim, darker, so I'm doing it in like a little densely packed zigzag line. And as I'm going, I've decided to break it up. It started to get lighter up there. So that whole section now I've drawn in just as a continuation. 
into here. It's very, very dark. Notice I'm turning my image around. So at first I didn't quite know how I was going to do these things, but using this technique, I'm just drawing over things and trying things out. And I begin to see the way I would interpret the marks. Now, big sections are different down here. Look at these section here on its chest, very different from what's going on the wing. So at first I might not have felt confident doing that, but I'm now going to work on this bit. So I'm gonna look at that dark section and do my solid fill bits to begin with. Notice I'm following the direction of the feathers and the marks. Let's have a little check. So getting those things in. I wonder what happens between there and there. I'm going back to look. Oh, small marks. That's a bit fluffy. So I've done some small marks and some fluffy dots. Let's see a few more dots into here. Oh, there's mid-tones. If it's a white bit, a completely white bit, I might leave that as a complete white bit. So I'm looking for the direction, the shapes. Now what I'm not doing is I'm not looking at a shape like this and then drawing a sort of really obvious shape around it at the moment. I'm just doing the fill, the solid fill. So I'm drawing into those shapes. I'm not jumping around the whole image. I'm like working on one section at a time because the feathers in one section are probably fairly similar. Now remember when you're watching the videos, what's quite useful is to watch the video completely, start the task, pause it and have a go. And then you can go back and see it in context. I'm going to jump all the way down now over here. If it was my drawing and I was doing it completely, I would work that whole section down. But I'm just going to come down and do a completely different bit. So into here, do you see these very clear barb lines? But they're not like one single line, they're like a little... I don't know, broken bit of line. So I'm just drawing the shapes. But notice my pencil tip. Do you see what it's doing? It's going up and down because I can see those marks. Oops, I went off the line. Does it matter? I don't think it does. Looks quite good, doesn't it, in translation? In here, they look like long, soft bits. See how I'm doing those wispy bits? And remember at the end, I'm doing those lines that flick at the end so they're soft. Let's look at them soft marks so into a claw a bit like the beak remember what I did on the beak I did some solid fill so I'm looking for the solid sections on here but I'm also making sure I'm following the shape of the claw the talon as it's going down that's working quite well we're going to jump over here into a new section onto the wing let's get a bit here there's a little section there it's like a I don't know what it's like. It's like a little rectangle with bits coming out the side. So rather than being overwhelmed by the complexity of this massive section, I'm just going down one bit quite systematically. I realise I've not drawn in the edge of the wing. It's not dark, remember, it's not got a solid line, so I've drawn a bit of a broken line in there. And what distinguishes the wing from this section is changing pattern, and this bit is a bit darker. So I might lightly, at that side of the body, do a little bit of light shading. See there's a little bit of light shading? It'll make my wings stand out a bit. And back I go. I'm going to go into these little marks. Remember that technique I had of a little zigzaggy line? I feel like I need a sound effect. When I was drawing on my own and not on a video, I'd probably make a little noise. Do -do -do, do -do 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 Strange what's in your head when you're working. Do I like those? Maybe I need to be a bit thicker. I'm going back into them a little bit. But they're working quite well. So in this task, what we're doing, we are using this trace technique, not as a massive cheat, but to help us interpret the marks that are within the image. Right, so I've been working for a little while and it's going well. 
the real important thing is that you put a decent piece of tape across the top at the beginning because if it starts to move and you knock it offline, this will not move side to side. It's nice and secure. If you move it offline, you'll have to have a teacher realign it for you. Now check him out, it's going very nicely. Now you could say it's a trace technique and it is, but what have I actually learned about it? Well, I've learned lots about the direction of the marks in the feathers. So while these ones at this side some of them are going rounded like this and some are going rounded like that. They're suggesting the volume. In here, there's a lot more solid feel. It's a lot darker. I've gone for a very big zigzaggy line into that. You can see it, but the long flight feathers have had to employ a different technique. Where I get just a plain line, like down here, I might go back into it and add a little bit more light tone. So we're getting a little bit more light tone. Now, one thing I have learned is if I do get some plain areas, here's one. I can incorporate just some light marks, just like you would when you're drawing with pencil. And those light marks will come through as light marks. Here it looks a bit flat. So I'm just putting some of those little light marks into there. You can see it coming through. At times, you can easily get lost thinking, where am I up to? But if you get to a bit and you look, it looks a bit plain, just try and work out where you are and go back and start drawing again. So I can keep building up. Now, other things I've learned, directional line is really important. So these little textures, the scale of the mark, like small bits, so I'm building up in here, coming radiating from this eye. And if you remember, I started off around here at the beginning with those lines. Now it's very important that you're shading the dark areas, not the light areas. You're not drawing a line onto the light areas. You're filling in other areas. So that became a quite important feature as I started developing my drawing. It looks a bit plain in that bit. It's kind of small marks. You see, I've gone in for the dot to check it out. Coming in nicely, it's plain up there. What happens up there? Oh, it's got a bit of shadow in this bit. So little small marks, bit of directional line, way better. So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna keep working in and backwards and forwards. I think what we'll give you is an A5 version to reduce the amount of work and just so you can do it at a reasonable speed. When it's completely done, we will photocopy them and we might do a little bit of paint colour wash on them and develop this in another direction before we move on to our prints. And finally, I think I've about finished it. I've been fiddling backwards and forwards, lifting it, looking, lifting it, doing a bit more, checking it. Here we go. What's he look like? Loads of texture. I've learned so much about the texture and the marks that when I go on to my next work, I'll be able to take some of this knowledge with me. Good luck and enjoy this process.